recent foreign military interventions against terrorism have challenged the traditional approach to the geographical scope of application of the law of non-international armed conflict. Consider, for instance, the huge increase in the use of drones. In this context, it has been advocated that IHL may apply in non-belligerent states. This interpretation goes against the traditional geographic limits, the borders of the states involved in the armed conflict, and is far more expansive than the limited exception concerning the neighboring states in case of a spillover non-international armed conflict. This view is supported by the argument that territorial distance is not a relevant factor at all for determining the applicability of IHL. Why, if it is admitted that the law of non-international armed conflict may apply in neighboring countries, why would the crossing of an additional border prevent that law from applying to acts linked to the, the existing non-international armed conflict? Why, if it is admitted that IHL applies within the whole territory of a state, even to acts located very far away from the battlefield, why shouldn't IHL apply to acts which are located much closer to the battlefield, but in another state? So in the view of those who criticize the territory-based approach, what matters for IHL to be applicable to an act outside of the battlefield is the existence of a link or relation between that act and the existing armed conflicts, wherever the act is performed. So what's proposed is a nexus approach, rather than a territorial approach. But such approach remains problematic. The first criticism is that an overly expansive scope of application of IHL would enable states to rely extensively on the law of non-international armed conflict in order to depart from more restrictive obligations, especially those provided under human rights law and concerning the use of lethal force. However, we must again repeat what we have already emphasized several times now, that the applicability of the traditional IHL paradigm with respect to targeting does not necessarily mean that it will apply and will prevent another, more restrictive paradigm to apply. It is also useful to note that in this case, states would still have to conform to all the conditions imposed by Ius Albelum, as they would intervene on the territory of another state. Indeed, the expansive approach would not have any impact on Ius Albelum. It would not grant states the right to use force in foreign states without their consent. A second criticism is that it is challenging to imagine how a nexus-based approach would work on a global scale. Some argue that the nexus must be conceived in the same way as the general nexus developed by the international criminal tribunals in order to determine whether acts may be linked to an armed conflict, although they happened outside of the battlefield, but within the territory where the hostilities take place. Others object that such a nexus is too weak and cannot be used as such for determining the applicability of IHL to acts taking place very far away from the battlefield in non-belligerent states. 